Disciples. Dennis, where are you? Dennis Williams, come up here. Are you here? Yeah, you're right here. 
September of 2009, wow. about 6,000. Wow. Yeah. Most, most of them are the John 316 Cross Inc. parents. Okay. <laughs> but, uh, but we have made uh, 71, just made number 71 for Jesse, the ones that are being carried, which is amazing to me. And we also make crosses for new ministries that are being planted all around the state of Arizona yes. to put out in front of their building. Just a minute, let's stop a second. I don't think you can give it back to me. Well, you know, this is something. That's a cross. We want one. But it's a ballpoint pen. Can you imagine somebody, children or college people, just sitting in class taking notes with a John 316 written on it, and somebody sooner or later is going to notice that thing and say, What is that? Well, that's a cross. What's the sound? John 3.16. That would be a great witness, wouldn't it? Yes. He brought that in a man. It writes good. And he's, he's in the process of manufacturing. These are the 6,000 he made. And I was thinking, you know what? In fact, one of the, we're going to give this one to one of the kids tonight. And it's willing, after they, we got some preachers tonight. we got some preachers tonight. Different, just like these little kids carrying the cross. We're good. They're going to be up here sharing tonight. We're going to give one of these to the kid. It'll use this when he's in school. Just take notes or, or to take notes or do whatever, and then when people ask them, you can either pull out your track, your John Rick seat here, just sit down and tell them that God loves them and maybe give them this or whatever. But that, that's what we need to do is learn different ways of just sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Well, Jesse has been carrying these crosses. Oh, he just got back from Winslow last week. Tomorrow morning he's getting the us. Yes, the morning, morning we are leading to uh, Happy Valley. It's uh, 16 miles away from here, but we need to be there at 10 a.m. in the morning. So we're going to start walking at 3.30 in the morning. And, um, and we already have like a good team, there's like about six of us. Um, yeah, they're here. Jeff, so can you stand up if you're going to walk tomorrow with me? Miles, get up. There we go, Eric. Oh, man. John, John, John. Right there. Let's go. Uh, yeah, not only that, but this is going to be uh, the church that we deliver on the cross. They're going to join us tomorrow. So it's going to be about like about 15 people all, all together tomorrow. And it's, see, this is how, what is God is doing in this, uh, in this street uh, in Phoenix. Today, uh, our pastor, uh, this is something different. We did an outreach in uh, Indian school. And our pastor right here, he did a... Street preaching, you know, straight up in the street for noon time, 11, between 11 and 11.20. You will not believe how many people got touched to this afternoon, just by six of, what's like a 10 of us, a red shirt. They preached in the cross with the border from one quarter to the next quarter. Be honest with you, hunt for Jesus. But people that do not only hunt, they just were in love with what we do. This is a very special ministry because this is, all the, I've been delivering crosses, like he said, 70 or 69 crosses myself. And um, every minister that I go, they want to hear about us. And when I come here, you ask me about those ministries. <laughs> to be honest with you, they don't do it. I, I would say maybe 20% of what we do. This is a very, very, uh, I would say, power ministry of motion. Today, we only need it just to stand on the street in a uh, bullhorn. This man was just, you know. There were like a ten of us taking church in the bullhorn. That was amazing for two hours, non-stop preaching, preaching, telling about God is to love them, and God is still saving lives. 
It's what it's all about. And um, I want to say one more thing before I go, Pastor. Um, I'm thankful for those kids. I know those kids for the past four years. And I know you guys are going to do great. Praise the Lord. Thank you. In fact, you know, we've had a soul winning class, been trying to get people to do this. And Frank Austin, he was the one that kind of put this together. But they went to another concert tonight with Brian, the director. So they, I mean, they're doing their thing. But anyway, he says, why don't you come out and show us how to do it? So I got out today and I preached about 40 minutes on the street. He said, you got to wait for the cars coming. He goes, Jesus, what are you going to do about Jesus? So here comes the next bus. That's how, by the way, with the little mini pit, that's how we started this stuff. Right. Amen. And then we get the cross up there and back to here. But in the meantime, while he's coming up here, he's been building these crosses. And he's built, and they're excellent. You can all see them on the way out. I mean, they're very, very well done. And you know what? On Saturday night, right now, we got an outreach going in our mission. For, uh, 4006 West Van Buren. And there's nothing but kids down there. And we have kids carrying a cross. And he's the one that made this cross for this little kid. And I asked him today, how much money does it cost to make one of those little kids' crosses? $35. About 35 bucks. Let's take an offering. See if we can get 70 bucks to make two of those. Praise the Lord. I'm going to put in the first 20. Anybody wants to do that? No, we got a regular offer coming up. Everybody wants to do it. Because he can't afford it. Bring your money right there. Come on, everybody that wants to just give some money for that cross. What do you think about our race today? That gets you all fired up or what? It was great. It was great. Um, we had, well, it's just to visualize, get in your mind to visualize. Uh, it was about 30, about 30 cars. I'd say 20 to 30 cars every 30 seconds would stop at the stoplight. So you imagine that and times it by a couple hours. We, we took at least... A thousand people heard the name Jesus Christ in their day to day, and, and you know, in the world, they don't hear Jesus Christ. They hear news. They hear murder. They hear all this, all this death stuff. But with just that one little seed, who knows what God can do with that one little second of their life where they heard Jesus Christ? And we don't know what they're going through. And I, I believe, I truly believe that just with the opportunity, just with you uh, saying the word Jesus Christ to somebody, God can do so much with that. It's not your own effort. It's what God does with the seed. Amen. You know what? Yeah, we got it. This is what happened. But well, after doing this, next thing everybody gets involved. By the way, we all need to get involved. Here's what I'd like to have you do this week. In fact, we did it in Soul Winning this morning. Find somebody to talk to about the Lord this week. Just get in a conversation. Just the whole idea is just getting in a conversation with somebody. Now the idea of leading the Lord or four spirits. Just get in a conversation and see what happens. That's what happened out there today. Man, once we started to preach, everybody just started going everywhere, talking to everybody. And by the way, I just admitted, I called the mission. I said, how many beds you got? They said they got five beds. We took one to the mission. We brought one here, and we brought a lady here. And I know they prayed with a whole lot of people. And this is just a one outreach. We did another outreach over here today. How was that? Did that go pretty good? Very good. The kids outreach across the street, trailer park. How did that go today? Anybody do that one? I didn't know. That was good. That was good. Indian reservation. How'd that one go today? Amen. Amen. It went good. Amen. So you know what? We just need to just keep on. By the way, we have a prison service going on right now tonight. We got another outreach down at 16th Street, going between Washington and uh, Jefferson, going on right now. We got this service going on. I'm telling you something. God is using us. Amen. Well, I tell you what. We got enough to make three crosses. Yeah. 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 This place is amazing. But I just want to share this with you guys. Uh, we did start challenging students in, thank you, God bless you. In, in 2010 to, in the classroom to start using the John 316 cross sync fan, and they responded and they proved that they're not ashamed of the gospel. And we have students in high school levels and college campuses around the state of Arizona that are using these pens and the testimonies are absolutely amazing. And, and just to give <laughs> an example of uh, one testimony, we also start challenging uh, people to use them in the workplace. Like Shelly back there, she used hers. She said it opened up a whole door of opportunity in the workplace. 
She found out that there were people that were Christian. She didn't know were Christian and just gave her an opportunity to witness to people. Just that little pen, who would ever thought? And uh, one of the testimonies that I like to share with people that really, really was a blessing to me was early on, I think even way back in 2009, my sister worked at John C. Lincoln Hospital and uh, she had a friend, she has a friend there that's a nurse. And this lady would always ask her, can I get some more pens from you? She says, I like to, I like to get these pens and, and just keep them in case there's somebody here at the hospital that's a little down and they need a little pick-me-up. So, so she, uh, she gave one to this lady that was at the hospital who her father was in the hospital and he was lying there on his deathbed. And uh, so she gave it to the lady and the lady gave it to her father. Well, when, the, when her father seen that pen, he grabbed a hold of it, clutched it, and held it to his chest, and he saw that it said John 3.16 on it, so he started repeating John 3.16 over and over again. The next morning, he went home to be with the Lord. Well, the family was so touched by the fact that the effect that that pen had on their father that they, when they buried him, he was, they buried him with him still holding that pen to his chest. Right there. So that's just, that's just one of the many, many testimonies from those little cross pens I never thought would have such an effect on people's lives. But it, let me just say this, Pastor Rolf, I'll stop. I gotta say this about Church on the Street. A church on the Street is a special force in the army of the living God that God is using to turn this city upside down right. for His kingdom oh, and for His glory. Now, I don't know if you can give a praise for that. Yes, 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 yes. yes. I know we have to give all the glory to our Lord and Savior Jesus Amen. Christ and to our Father God and the power of the Holy Spirit, but I want to just, I, I believe in giving honor and, and credit where credit is due, and I want to say to these two faithful servants right here, yes. who have laid down their lives as a cause of Jesus Christ, thank you both very much for the Savior. Bless you and make a safe to find you in the of the days of your life. Thank you. Hey, give the Lord a good praise also. If you had to get up front and talk to people. Oh, no, oh. No, 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 no. Oh, okay, we got a minute. Yes or no? This is good. This will help somebody. My whole life, and I've shared this with Dave, I've avoided speaking publicly. All through school, I, I, I refused to give an oral report. It had an effect on my grades. When I went to work for this multi-million dollar corporation, I sat in on hundreds of meetings where I could have gave my input and maybe even got promoted. I'm sure I would have. But I held back, and I would leave those meetings thinking, man, why don't you just open your mouth? You've got something to offer these people with your experience. Why don't you say something? And I would beat myself up for that. And then I came here. Yes. And, uh, and, and I was a nervous wreck. Dave will tell you. And I got I, Dave, I just want to give you credit tonight, and he don't like for us. Yeah. But Dave, who I know encourages a lot. Dave. I know he encourages a lot of people here. Way, way back when we were in first days, and, 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 and Dave knew that my chance was coming where I had to give up and get up and give my testimony because we'd become RAs by then. And uh, I said, no, I can't do it. Dave says, yes, you can. I said, I can't do it. He says, yes, you can. And he just kept encouraging me and, and just comforting me like he does with people. And, uh, and so I did it. And I'll never forget. And just like right now, you know, how God, his, yeah, how his love casts out all fear. You know, I was not afraid no more. And now here I am. Pastor Walt has to hold the microphone because, because of God, not nothing I'm doing, but because of God, what he's done in my life, what he's done in my life, and just let me say this, I'll stop. If you're here, if you're here, and, and God loved you so much to bring you to this program, if you're here in this program because God loved you that much, I just want to tell you that your best days are yet to come. Amen. Yeah. He has a plan and a purpose for your life. Oh, really? Look at where he brought me from, and I was well, listen, mess. you can tell he's extremely intelligent and articulate. That fear. He's a carpenter. And I'll tell you something, if you ever see one of these pens, they are very, very, very well made. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, and just think about this. Here's a man, broken, shattered life, comes here, goes through the program, and then he got fired. And God is able to use him Mightily. And he's just one man. Nothing to say. God bless you. Let's give the Lord a break. Amen, amen, amen. Isn't that gracious? 
I'll tell you what, God is so, so gracious and unbelievable. Jeff, you got something quick to say? This is business. By the way, I'm afraid to turn him loose. He just got back to carrying a cross to Winslow. That's why he's got a little suntan there. Okay, we've got two minutes to tell us about Winslow and 30 seconds to tell us about your... Oh, boy, I don't, two minutes isn't enough time to talk about Winslow. Winslow was an awesome, God-inspired experience. Oh, sorry, I don't talk about it enough? <laughs> Anyways, um, yeah, Winslow was an awesome, awesome experience. Uh, two minutes, like I say, is not enough time. But uh, seriously, and um, Pastor Pete, and uh, Pastor Brian have talked with me, and we're gonna reopen that side entrance for the discipleship. So they would like the lobby to be kept for business personnel, and they would like the disciples, the bicycles, the traffic, the noise, and everything to be conducted through that side lobby. So if we could cooperate with them, we're gonna put a desk up there with the sign-out sheets. We're gonna put somebody there to uh, sign in, sign out, and just kind of like we used to do, we're going to use that side entrance for all our discipleships coming in and out, bicycles. What we're doing is we're tearing up the doors, coming in and out with the traffic and hitting them with the bicycles and tearing the things up. And they just fixed those doors and they're already falling apart. So they asked me if we could do this and I said that's not a problem. I think we can all uh, cooperate with them and try and work with them. Okay, so starting on Monday, everybody please use the uh, side entrance, try and leave the lobby for the visitors and the, the everything that they're trying to do. The pastor. Hey, go ahead. <laughs> you know, Jeff, you know, he had a rough background to our prison. Oh yeah. But you know, he's the head of security now. He's, he's trying to help, help all the lady guys in prison. And guess where he came from? You know, just, just, here, here's the deal. Uh, here's the deal, how God's able to use people. It's just willing to be used. Is that right? Yes, it is. I know you got all fired up. I wish we had time to talk about Winslow, but we oh, don't. Yeah. Yeah, What's yeah. one of the things, just one of the things that stands out? One of the things that stands out, the fact that the highway patrol is washing our dirty underwear. <laughs> <laughs> funny yeah. Wait a minute, we're in church. <laughs> right, right. So, like, What's scriptural about that? <laughs> no, the, the, probably the most awesome thing is the whole out of the whole trip is we walked for three days. Me and Jesse walked for three days from uh, Fountain Hills to uh, Payson with we had four little things of water and a bag of trail mix. And for three days of walking, we were provided food, water, everything we needed every step of the way. Clean underwear. And, and clean underwear, exactly. Yeah. So I can, come on, I've never been any better than that. And if that's not God, I don't know what is. Yeah. Is this thing fun? It's a blast. It's a blast. That's why we're going in the morning. <laughs> Let's give the Lord a good praise, God. Now we're going to take our walking. Amen. Sure. what is the last time you sang for a church on the street? 20 years? Probably 15. 15 years. Sherry used to come down and sing with us all the time. And finally she... Let's get a little So thank God for the anointing. What is it? Thank you, Lord. I've got to meet all these guys out of prison. I have got a... Blue. Even their pretty forger that plays the piano. <laughs> you know, it's amazing. While well, they're getting ready to set up for the, the kid, Denise, I guess, coming back on the bus today, she was hemorrhaging pretty bad, so they had to take her to the hospital. So I guess she could be in pretty bad shape, so we just need to lift her up. Amen. 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 Heavenly Father, God, you just said you go to all the world and preach the gospel. You said the signs of Paul that would lead. God, you just simply said, lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. But we can't lay hands on her, but God, we can pray for her. And we just pray, God, whatever your perfect will is. And our our prayers will be you just touch her and heal her, body miraculously. And if you choose to use a doctor for whatever your perfect will is, God, that's what we pray for. But give her peace. Let her family have peace. For your glory, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. amen.